Welcome to the World History One lecture series. At the end of each slide, there will be a 10 second delay. Use this time to pause the presentation and complete your notes. When you are done, push play and you will move forward. This lecture will begin in 5 seconds. Welcome to World History One Lecture 2.4 on the Geography of Egyptian Civilization. That's right, I said Egypt! I know what you're thinking. Oh please, I know this. Not Egypt again. I mean, how many times do I have to learn about this place? It's got pyramids, I know about the Nile River, there's camels, they've got hieroglyphics, they got King Tut, they got mummies, I know about pharaohs and the Sphinx. What else can I learn about Egypt? I mean, everybody from Indiana Jones to Brandon Fraser's been in Egypt. Well, you're right. You do know a lot about Egypt. And today we're going to take what you've learned, and a little of what you didn't know, and we're going to use Egypt to study the characteristics and effects we find in all civilizations. With that said, go to the next slide. Let's make sure that we can locate Egypt before we go any further. Here is a map of Africa, and that shaded country in the top right corner of Africa is modern-day Egypt. You can see that Egypt is not part of the Middle East. But when we bring this other map up, we can also see that things are close together in this part of the world. In fact, we used Egypt as a landmark to locate Mesopotamia. The other two landmarks that we used were the Mediterranean Sea and the Persian Gulf. We even know that Mesopotamia and Egypt form the ends of the Fertile Crescent. Now, to make sure we know exactly where to find Egypt, we're going to add one new landmark. That is the Red Sea. The Red Sea separates Egypt and Africa from the Arabian Peninsula in Asia. Go ahead to the next slide. Now, Egypt and Mesopotamia, geographically, are similar. You're going to see Egypt has a river, Mesopotamia had rivers, we have good soil, but there is one important difference that makes Egypt stronger than Mesopotamia. Egypt is a fortress, geographically. Egypt is geographically protected on all sides. The Mediterranean Sea protects Egypt to the north, the deserts protect Egypt to the east and the west, and the mountains protect Egypt to the south. We've already learned that Mesopotamia is geographically easy to get into. So Egypt is protected from invaders. Mesopotamia, not so much. Go to the next slide. Because of Egypt's geography, there is no ancient civilization without the Nile River. In fact, we call it the gift of the Nile because the Nile River dramatically affects Egyptian civilization. It's also one of a few rivers that flows from south to north, and this causes some geographic confusion within Egypt. Let's clean some of that up. We're going to start with the Nile Delta. The Nile Delta provided fertile soil. This is where the river empties out into the Mediterranean Sea. All the stuff from the mountains comes down and lands up here. It provides fertile soil. And there's also flooding and irrigation here. It all increases Egypt's agricultural surpluses, just like what happened in Mesopotamia. We also have two major areas within ancient Egyptian civilization and we're going to have trade between them. So trade's going to occur between the lower Nile, which is the northern part of the Nile River Valley, and the upper Nile, which is the southern part of the Nile River Valley. 
and everything south of the first cataract, the first shallow part in the river, is no longer Egypt. Now that is an area controlled by a kingdom called Nubia, or Cush. Go ahead to the next slide. Ancient Egyptian civilization is special because it lasts for a very long time. In fact, ancient Egyptian civilization lasts for over 2,300 years. That's the entire ancient era into the beginning of the classical era. And during this time, we have three kingdoms in Egyptian history. Three times when all of Egypt is unified under one power. The first kingdom is the Old Kingdom. That's from 2700 BCE to 2200 BCE. This is the age of the pharaohs and the pyramids. Pharaoh is in complete control. Then we have the Middle Kingdom. That's from 2100 BCE to about 1800 BCE. At this time, the pharaoh only has partial power, and he shares that power with the nobles, with other people in Egyptian civilization. Finally, we have the New Kingdom. That lasts from 1570 BCE to 1080 BCE. This is imperialistic Egypt. One pharaoh running the land, and he is trying to expand his empire to make it as big and as strong as possible. These are the three unified times, the three kingdoms of Egypt. Go to the next slide. So, we have these three unified kingdoms of Egypt. But what's going on when Egypt isn't unified? And more importantly, when does ancient Egyptian civilization end? And why? All right. Well, the three kingdoms are divided with periods of disorganization and outside rule. In other words, there are times in Egyptian history when nobody's in charge, or even worse, outsiders are in charge, like the Hyksos. These guys, they use their chariots, which are the stealth fighter of the day, the greatest military achievement of the era, and they invade Egypt and they take over for a while. As for the other thing, Ancient Egyptian civilization ends in 330 BCE with the arrival of a guy named Alexander of Macedonia. You know him as Alexander the Great. And there's that date again, 330 BCE, one year off from when Mesopotamian civilization ends. We're going to see a lot more of this guy. That's it for this lecture, and I look forward to seeing you in class.